finding an area about the y-axis. There's a couple of ways you can go about this. Uh, you can either use some clever technique integrating with respect to x, or you can rearrange your function and integrate with respect to y. Now, here in New South Wales, integration with respect to y doesn't appear in our syllabus. It's a little contentious because there are two questions that appear in what's called the topic guide, which again makes no mention of integration with respect to y. That could be done by rearranging the function to one in terms of y and integrating with respect to y. I will do those two examples here now and uh, show you uh, multiple ways to answer those to answer those questions and, and to show that uh, doing it with respect to y is uh, is not necessary. All right, so let's introduce that method now. So one way of finding such an area is, let's write them out as steps. Uh, one, rearrange function in terms of y, two, you've got to find the new limits of integration So originally they would have been in terms of x and you need to find out what they are in terms of y. And three, finally you integrate with respect to y. Right, so example number one. So the first one in our topic guide is area bounded by y equals x squared minus 4 and y equals 5. Now I have attempted to, oh, there we go, copy, thank you, and Paste. All right, so I've drawn this one beforehand to try and make things a little neater. So the area bounded by y equals x squared minus 4. Yes, that 5 is referring to the square below it, I, I believe. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yep. And the line y equals 5. So we're after. Can I write on it? We're after, let me use a different color, that area in there. Uh, it's, uh, it seems immediately um, obvious that you may want to do this in terms of why. So let's, uh, let's, we'll do that first. So if I have, say, Solution, let's call it one. Uh, via dy. Firstly, make x the subject. Of, so I've got y equals x squared minus four. So that'll be x squared equals y plus 4, taking the 4 to the other side, x equals the square root of y plus 4. Now I know what you're thinking, I've dropped half of my solution, but I don't really want it. I, what I've got now 
Oops. What I've got now is something like this. All right. Uh, yeah. Something like this. So I can simply multiply the area of this thing by two to get back to the one that I wanted. So my area then is twice, and I need the new limits of integration. Let me move it down a bit. It's well, actually, let's go all the way left. Uh, two, I just said that. Two times the limit of, so it'll be from, this is minus four. And of course it goes up to five. Minus four of my new function now, which is y plus four to y. Two times this thing. Now, this may uh, may throw, especially a, a two unit student, this looks like I have to invoke some kind of function of a function mojo, and normally I would, except the fact that this is just a plain y and a constant. Uh, and so it, it is simply, you know, the add one to the power and divide by it, because the function in here is so simple. But that may not be easy for many students. Uh, I'm going to say two by two is four on three. And then I'm going to have nine to the three on two. And then that'll be minus four plus four. So I get a zero. Don't know why I put that in brackets. And that ends up being that's nine, square root of nine is three. Three to the power of three is 27. That's four times 27 on three. Uh, 34 nines. Four nines are 36. And we have an area. All right, so. Solution two. It's a pity I couldn't fit this on one page. Solution two. And my guess is this is how the author wanted it to be solved, is that I simply have the area between two functions, which is in the syllabus. So my, my higher function is y equals five, and my lower function is the x squared minus four. And so it's simply the area below one subtracted from the area below the other. And it doesn't matter the fact that the origin is cutting through here, the x-axis, uh, as we discussed before, the order is preserved. It doesn't matter where, where that actually ends up being. So, um, I need the, I need the, I need the limits of my integration, which will be here and here. So it's going from minus three to three. And so this area then, simply the integral from minus three to three of the top function, which is five, minus the lower function, which is x squared minus four, dx. 
And that, I can exploit the symmetry here. Say that it's two times the, oops, back to the pen. Two times integral from naught to three. And then I can go five minus, minus four is five plus four, which is nine minus x squared dx. And that thing is quite simple to integrate. Less likely to throw off students compared to this thing. Not that it was particularly hard either. So can I integrate this thing? So it equals two times uh, 9 becomes 9x, and that is x to the 3 on 3. And then I've got to go from 0 up to 3. And I've got two lots of, now I'll have 3, no, the 27 minus that thing cubed on 3. Uh, minus nothing. And that's 9, 27 minus 9 is 18, and 2 times 18 is 36. You know, squared, and it's the same answer. Hurrah, everything is right with the world. So I, I think that this is the way that this was intended to be solved, right? Uh, example two. Let's look at the second one. Now, the, it's important to note that the second one actually follows the first one, and it uh, looks suspiciously similar. It is, looking across, it is to find the area bounded by y equals x squared, y equals 4, and y equals 9. And that's this one. Yeah, oops. So we want that area there. Right, now there are a couple of ways to go about this. Firstly, of course, you could do the uh, rearrangement of the function and integrate with respect to y which I simply called dy. So if we do this via dy, so solution, oops, one, did I label that one two? I did. Solution one, uh, via dy. So make x, subject of y equals x squared, and I'm left with x equals root y, which again, is going to leave me with a problem that looks like this kind of thing. And I can multiply it by 2 in order to find what I'm after. So this actually gives you quite a simple integral, 2 times, we're going 4 to 9, right, 4 to 9 of what I just found, which is root y to y. Going to just squash things up a little bit. I feel I'm wasting virtual paper. So if I go to the right, that's 2 times the that's uh, um, divide by 3 on 2 is multiplying by 2 on 3. y to the 3 on 2 from 4 to 9, which is equal to 
and those two times two is four on three out the front of nine to the three on two minus four to the three on two so I have square roots in there take them first four on three the square root of nine is three so that becomes three to the three and the square root of four is two that becomes two to the three contribute to my own paper saving wish there we go uh, and so this becomes uh, three cubed is 27 four on three outside 27 minus two cubed is eight so at 19 so 19 times four 19 times four is four short of 80 which is 76 76 on three and we have an area 76 on three okay not too difficult but again not a technique that's explicitly said by the way this is the very last question given in the topic guide so it's meant to be probably the most difficult and it, it does follow it does follow this one right and you can see the parabola it's the same parabola just shifted upwards and indeed this line here is shifted by the same amount that upper bound so my guess is that what they wanted you to do is solve the other one first and then solve this one so solution two uh, it would be two applications of area between two curves in this case one of the curves is a straight line so you have the the first one that you have to work out which would be nine minus x squared as we discussed above and then you have to take away this one and so that goes from here to here minus two to two minus two to two of the top one which is four minus the lower one which is x squared dx uh, now I'm going to guess that um, I'm going to guess this was the intended this was the intended solution given that it follows example one and this has already been found right uh, if it wasn't the case then that's not the simplest way to go about uh, answering that now I'm not going to I'm not going to whoops see Daisy I'm not going to uh, to do that particular one uh, because it's just as was done above uh, how would I do this if I was given this particular question I would probably, I would probably do this, however, strictly following the syllabus, you're not meant to know how to do that. So how would I do it <laughs> without uh, integrating with respect to Y? I think I would do it this way. Um, so solution three, I would shift the whole problem down down 
by four. Now the the topic guide does talk about uh, this idea of it has the words translated vertically. So perhaps this is what they meant for us to do in order to solve this particular problem. I don't know. Um, yeah. We don't want that in my notes. So shift the problem down by four. So what does that look like? Well, I've got that one here. And the iPad is working and all is right with the world. Okay, good. Didn't work in take one. <laughs> so um, if I shift it down, then I've got the area of this rectangle here, right? And all I have to do is subtract away is these areas. Maybe not the best color to use. Oops. So it's the area of the purple one. All right, so I'd have A1. I'm not going to color it in because this would get a little confusing, but you can see where the line goes, A1. And subtract away from it these ones in here. So they go from 2 to 3, and that's minus 3 to 2, but I don't really care about the left-hand side because I'm going to multiply by 2 in the end. So, and I note that that's A2. So if I have A1 minus A2, note my area will equal raise purple. A1 minus A2. And I know that I can get there if I say 2 and this rectangle then is 3 by 5. Just 15, and then I want to subtract away this one from 2 to 3 of my function, which is x squared minus 4 dx. All right, and this is not difficult, and I've avoided integrating with respect to y. I don't have to know about it. So this is 2 outside of 15 minus, integrate this thing now, it's x cubed on 3 minus 4x from 2 to 3. Which is 2 outside of 15 minus. Uh, ay, 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 three, which is uh, three cubed is 27 on three is nine. Nine minus 12 is minus three. Minus three, and then I'm going to subtract away from that. My next one, two, that's eight on three. Eight on three minus eight. Eight on three minus eight is eight minus three. Eight to 24, eight minus 24 is minus 16 on 3. 16 is not divisible by 3, is it? No. So I end up with 2 outside of 15 
minus minus three. No, I can do that. Uh, seven on three. Seven on three. And this is two outside of got to do the fractions. It's uh, it's gonna yeah seventy six on seventy six on three seventy six on three units. Oh, fractions are hard. <laughs> Unit squared. Ah, uh, squared. All right, and is that what I got last time? Please, dear God. Uh, 76 on three units squared. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. All right, so uh, my fraction work was a little more difficult, but I managed to get through this without... Uh, integrating with respect to y, indeed I did it with respect to x. So uh, there you go. Uh, two problems which immediately look like they should be uh, done with respect to y, but uh, completely doable via via integration with respect to x, and I'm pretty sure this is how it was intended by the syllabus writers. Okay, well that does it for this lesson. I am Keith Johnston. Thank you for watching.